Disney hates women, or at least they prefer men, which is why their female characters are always so terrible and they're compared to men. This will be a multi-part series, but today we're gonna take a look at some good and bad examples and show why Disney can only write men even when they're women. Disney absolutely loves fake diversity, but it's clearly only surface level because all of their minority characters are two-dimensional tokenizations. I'm a black man carrying the stars and stripes. This is never more obvious than when they write their female characters. See, what they actually write are men, but then they just cast women. They write the most masculine female characters imaginable then the writers beat you over the head with the fact that they are stronger and more superior to all of the men around them. This is supposed to be empowering, I, I think, but it's the absolute opposite. You see, this, the message that they're sending is that masculinity is superior to femininity. Femini femininity. The product, the product of but my son returns. They're showing you that men are superior because they are the standard by which the female character is constantly compared to. I actually had a really hard time coming up with the examples because Disney has so many bad examples of this. That is one big pile of shit. But for starters, let's talk about Admiral Haldo from the second installment of the new Star Wars trequel, uh, trequel? sequel, trilogy sequel. Trequel is awesome. Sometimes my genius is it's almost frightening. In that movie, the rebels are being chased by the First Order, Admiral Leia is out of commission, and this new admiral comes up, Admiral Haldo, and she is going to be a foil for the egotistical flyboy, Poe Dameron. And she not only is meant to look smarter than him, she actually has like pink, purple hair. Like when you're writing, they say show, don't tell, but sometimes the symbolism, it's a, it's a little it's a little on the nose. Guys, we should probably bring that back just a tiny bit. Dominic. Bad guys? Pronounced bad G. She is meant to look smart and cunning and brave, but the only reason she has any veneer of those qualities, thin as it may be, is because Poe is written to be especially immature and brash and egotistical, kicking stuff, throwing things, throwing temper tantrums, and she's supposed to look mature and stoic by comparison. Now, this doesn't actually work. She comes off looking like an asshole through the entire movie, but the point is, her character relies on the character of Poe Dameron to have any substance whatsoever. She alone is terrible. She's not empowering. She's not a woman. She's not anything without Poe to be compared to. She needs the man for comparison. That is Disney's whole thing. This is a common pattern, but why are we comparing femininity and masculinity anyway? Why are we trying to, to hold them up to each other? One is not better than the other. Both are equally essential human traits. One of them is not strengthened by reducing the other. See, that is petty and childish thinking, and honestly, it embodies so much of social justice politics. My channel is strengthened when you hit the like button, by the way. Thanks. Excellent transition. Let's take a look at another example. How about Cap, no, let's not do Captain Marvel. Like, that's so easy. Like, she's toxic masculinity personified, like hilariously bad writing. Um, we could do, well, Mulan's too easy. Uh, Zhao Ling from the Shang-Chi movie, but again, like, oh, the woman's not allowed to train with the men. Like, it's hard to find, like, a compelling bad example that isn't so obvious. Disney's writing is so ham-fisted. Okay, real example. Captain Carter. Now this one is especially bad because it is a bastardization of a good female character, which we're gonna talk about in just a minute. Captain Carter was featured in the Multiverse of Madness movie and also an episode of the What If series. Now the problem with Captain Carter is that she has no character whatsoever. She's nothing. She is Captain America, but palette swapped to a woman. She has nothing without Steve Rogers. She's compared to him constantly. In the Captain America movie, Captain America has nuance. His personality is built. Captain Carter just beats the shit out of people. That is her whole character. She is masculine all the way. She's punching down doors. She's beating up a ton of guys single-handedly. Her entire personality only exists because of the man, Captain America. And in the show, she's compared to the weak, frail Steve Rogers. She is doing the damsel in distress trope, but they just reverse it. They were subversive. God, I hate the word subversive so much because it basically just means we reverse things and we think we're clever. Captain Carter is a man and then they drew boobs and long hair on her. 
that's it. They completely erased all of the powerful femininity that Agent Carter had. Agent Carter and Pepper Potts are fantastic female characters that Disney stumbled upon. Now they are side characters, but they're marvelous. Look at both of these women. They're both strong and powerful, but not in a physically domineering way. They carry themselves with confidence, both of them are running large organizations. Pepper is the CEO of Stark Industries. Agent Carter is one of the founding members and eventually the director of S.H.I.E.L.D. Both of them show that they are physically capable, but that is not the core of their identity. The core of their identity is their strong femininity. They're both dressed feminine. They carry themselves in a feminine way. They don't have the haircut. These are strong women. And what Disney forgets is the woman part. They each also have a love interest, and this is really interesting, because a lot of strong female characters are stoic, super independent, don't need anybody. They refuse to give these women a love interest. Oftentimes, a man will flirt with them and they'll make a point of having them shut that man down because they don't need a man. Both Pepper Potts and Agent Carter have a love interest. They pursue them. They eventually have a real relationship with them, and they're not shown to be weakened because of that relationship. They do both show strength that at one point in their story arcs, they walk away from that romantic interest because of the actions that other person is taking. They both show that they don't have time to put up with the antics of the man in their life. Pepper tells Tony he's being a child and she has a company to run and doesn't have time to watch him just flit around and be indecisive. Agent Carter catches Steve Rogers kissing some woman and she's not upset by it. She says, she, look, I'm, I'm an agent. I have things to do. I got a war to win. I'm not going to chase after you like a lost puppy. I like you. I think you're attractive, but I'm not going to pine over you. And that's the kind of independent strength that these women show. It's not that they don't need a man. It's that they're not defined by those men. Come back next time. We're going to talk about not just why Disney hates women, but Disney really hates femininity. femininity. Come back next time.